This exercise is on solving logarithmic equations, a big part of the unit. And the solution of these logarithmic equations is based on the principles or the properties that we have just recently looked at. So let's begin with an example. Solve the following logarithmic equations. In the first one, the log of x base 2 plus the log of x plus 2 base 2 is equal to 3. Now we've actually solved simple logarithmic equations back before. The difference now is that we need to use properties to simplify the logarithmic exp expression before we can actually start the algebra. And it will involve this sort of standard method, method where you express the many logarithms as a single logarithm. So we are adding two logarithms together on the left side, so therefore we can express these as a single logarithm through the product law. And that would mean that we would be multiplying the x times the x plus 2 base 2. So this turns it into a single logarithm, the log of x times x plus 2 base 2 is equal to 3. Now obviously you can multiply that x in or distribute it in. I'm going to wait, but it could be done immediately if you, if you preferred that. Now once you get it down to a single logarithm, it's very important that you remember that you can't really go any further with it the way it is. So you need to express it in an exponential form. And then it's solvable. You get rid of the logarithm. So we then get 2 to the exponent of 3, 2, 2 cubed is equal to x times x plus 2. And there's no more logarithm. Solve uh, by expanding the 2 cubed and then also by distributing the x in to the x plus 2. So 8 is equal to x squared plus 2x. So we, we have at this point a fairly simple quadratic. So bring everything over to one side, set to 0, like you always do with quadratics, and then factor that quadratic, which factors nicely into x plus 4 times x minus 2. And then, after having done that, you, as always with these, set them both to 0, x plus 4 equals 0, or x minus 2 is equal to 0. Most of you will do this question much quicker than I am. And x equal negative 4, or x is equal to 2. Now this brings us to an important point in the uh, solution of this. When you're dealing with logarithmic equations, because you have a restriction on the domain of a logarithmic function, that is, you cannot take the log of 0 or um, a negative. So recall that for the log base b of x, x must be greater than 0. And that means, really, in simple terms, you cannot take the log of a negative number, 0 as well. So when I look at these, now, don't pull the trigger too quickly, because just because the number, the solution itself is negative, doesn't mean to be negative when you sub it back in and simplify. But you must check these solutions always, because very often you'll get two or even one solution, and you uh, have to make sure that you get to keep that answer. So for x equal negative 4, when I sub it back into the original, I get the log of negative 4 plus the log of negative 4 plus 2. And as soon as I see the log of a negative number, even once, you reject it. You don't even care about this one. The fact that it fails it again it doesn't really matter. So we reject x equal negative 4. And then you do the same thing for x equal 2. Now, OK, um, refer to this. You can't take the log of a negative number, as we know. Now, with x equal 2, don't just assume that you can keep it because it's positive you have to plug it in first. And you see that we're OK. The log of 2 is positive. The log of 2 plus 2 is 4 is positive. Now, I'm not going to go any further. I'm not actually going to be checking my work. And that's something else you have to be aware of. You can check to see if it works out. Then it's just like a check, um, an optional check for an equation that you might always do or may not. I don't advise that you do, because sometimes the check is more complicated than the actual solution. All I do is check. that you do not take the log of a negative number. And I'm saying negative, but I also mean 0.
So beta would be non-positive. Okay, so this tells me that assuming the algebra was done properly, that we get to keep x equal to two. So x therefore is equal to two. Let's try a few more. So the log of three x plus one base two minus the log of x minus eight base two is supposed to be equal to negative one. So we are in the same position we were last time. We have two logarithms on the left side. To solve, we used we we need to use the um, one of the logarithmic properties. In this case, the quotient law. And that would mean that this subtraction statement of the two logarithms would turn into division. So this becomes 3x plus 1 divided by x minus 8 to the base of 2. And this is equal to negative 1. So we now have it as a single logarithm. And anytime you have it as a single logarithm, we can express it in exponential form. Remember, you start with the base, 2. Go across the equal side, 2 to the negative 1, is equal to 3x plus 1 divided by x minus 8. And 2 to the negative 1, in order to solve that, you will want to write it as um, with a positive exponent. So this becomes 1 over 2 is equal to 3x plus 1 over x minus 8. Cross and multiply. So 1 times x minus 8 is x minus 8, and that's equal to 2 times 3x plus 1. So therefore, x minus 8 is equal to 6x plus 2. Bring the x's over to, say, the left side, uh, or say the right side, and that would give us 5x on the right subtract x from both sides, subtract the 2 away, and we get negative 10 is equal to 5x. So therefore, x is equal to negative 2. Now, you've probably got a bad feeling about this one, but you, mean, you need to check x equal negative 2. So you just sub it back into the original. So log base 2 of 3 times negative 2 plus 1 minus log base 2 of negative 2 minus 8 is equal to negative 1. And as soon as you see that you're taking the log of a negative number, then you've got it. So this is negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5 plus, excuse me, minus the log of negative 10 base 2. And that's all I need to see. Reject, reject. So we reject x equal negative 2. So therefore, there is no solution. Let us try another one. Now this one's got one, two, three, four terms. And when we simplify it, we need to remember a few things. In our effort to express these as a single logarithm, we have to apply the power law first. That's the same as when we were doing the straight simplifications. So I'm going to do that kind of in two steps in one. You see, we do have to gather all the logarithms together if we're going to you know, combine them. And therefore, the odd man out is the constant term 1. So that stays there. And then I'm going to take this 2 log 4, base 8, and I'm going to take that 2 and apply it to the 4. So by applying the power property, it can then go up like that. And then it's going to be plus the log of x plus 1, base 8. And then this 5 log 2, we take this whole term to the other side. 
and it becomes minus 5 log 2. Of course, log 2 base 8, the 5 can be taken into the 2. So we have to tuck in these exponents first before we start um, using the other properties. Now you could do this in one step or you can do this in two, but um, it would be log base 8, draw your fraction bar and just decide who goes on top, who goes on the bottom. Remember any positive term on top. So the 4 squared, which is 16, goes on top. The x plus 1 goes on the top. And then the log, the 2 to the 5 goes on the bottom. Now 2 to the 5 is 32. So we get this. Now we have as a single logarithm. However, although you could go into exponential form immediately, you may prefer to clean that up first. So the 16 over the 32 is x plus 1. 16 over 32 would be x plus 1 over 2. And then this becomes 8 to the 1 when you go into exponential form is equal to x plus 1 over 2. Now if you were to cross and multiply with this thing, right that says 8 over 1, you would then get 8 times 2 is 16 is equal to x plus 1 and through subtraction sub of 1 we get x is equal to 15. And then as we have been doing before we check. I have a good feeling about this one. 5 log 2, base 8, well there's no x in there so there's no difficulties, plus 1, that'll be no problem, is equal to 2 log 4, base 8, plus the log of 15, plus 1, that is 16, base 8. And that's the one I'm concerned with, it's positive. So therefore, it's a keeper. x is equal to 15. I repeat, it is not necessary to check it like it is a regular equation. You can if you want, and seeing if you actually have the right number. I'm not checking the algebra. I'm just basing this check on the restrictions associated with logarithmic functions. If the question doesn't state that you, like if it's a multiple choice question, many people just do a quick scan of it and, and make a decision. But for written response type questions, you do need to check and show it. Number four, the log of x base 3 root 2 plus the log of x plus 3 base 3 root 2 minus 2 is equal to 0. Well, nothing really remarkable about this one except that it will require a little bit of manipulation. Nothing too strenuous though. The log terms will stay on the left. But take that 2 over. Apply the product law where we can multiply these two together. So log of x times x plus 3 base 3 root 2 is equal to 2. And at this stage you really have to train yourself to go into exponential form because some people have a tendency just to stare at this for a while. You don't want to do that. Put it in exponential form so the base 3 root 2 to the exponent of 2 is equal to x times x plus 3 which I'm going to just write as x squared plus 3x. Also be careful with squaring that radical. I know that most of, most of you will have no trouble with it, but don't make a mistake with this. Square both parts of it. 3 squared is 9, root 2 squared is 2, so that means 18 is equal to x squared plus 3x. And then just bring it all over. So 0 is equal to x squared plus 3x minus 18. It should factor into x plus 6, x minus 3. I'm going to take this way up to the top. Set each factor to 0, just like you always do with the quadratic. So 0 is equal to x plus 6, 0 is equal to x take away 3. And then x equal 3, 
x equal negative 6. You're probably thinking that we reject the x equal negative 6. Probably you're right. Let's see what happens though. And as I plug it in, and I'm not even going to go the, the distance on this one. When I see I've got the log of negative 6 root 3 root 2, I reject right away. We're busy people. And you fail one of the terms, that's all it takes. And then check x equal 3. Now I also have a positive feeling about this one because this is a positive term. I don't see anything really weird happening inside there. We, we're okay with that first term. The log of 3 we can live with plus the log base 3 root 2 of 3 plus 3. We're okay there. That's positive 6. And then minus 2 equals 0. We're okay. So therefore x is in fact equal to 3. So well, that is the method for these. Always the same. It's those properties that matter. Now let's try this one, last one. Now, the only thing that's odd about this problem is that there is no constant term. But that shouldn't be a big problem. We gather up our logarithms just like we've been doing for the previous questions. And by the way, for any of these, stop the tape and do it yourself and check your answer. It's a good way to, to uh, get comfortable with these and then just replay it or just play it uh, to uh, check your answer. Everything goes over to one side. And when you're simplifying logarithms, draw your fraction bar and just decide who goes on top. The positive one's on top, the negative on the bottom. So the 2's on top, the x is on the top, the 10 is on the bottom, and that's equal to 0. We can go no further in logarithms. So go 3 to the 0 in exponential form is equal to 2x over 10. I'm just going to write that as x over 5. Simplify that fraction. So 1 is equal to x over 5. And then when you clean up that denominator, you will get x is equal to 5. You probably think this one's going to work, and you're probably right. When you sub in x as 5, You'll get the log of 5 base 3 root 2 plus the log of 2 ba base 3, excuse me, not 3 root 2. So last question is equal to the log of 10 base 3. And look at this. We've got, that's, that's okay. So therefore, x is in fact equal to 5. So we did it. The next lesson will have an alternate method to solve some of these questions, but basically this is the method that you apply for any logarithmic equation, no matter how complex. Thank you for your time.